This is nothing but controversy. Four guys on a podcast and we're talking about sports. Four guys on a podcast and we're talking about sports. Nothing but controversy. Matt Dawson, Cam, and Shane. So welcome back to another episode of More Controversy presented by the Nothing But Controversy podcast. And today we have a very special guest. Uh, he went to college at Louisiana Lafayette, played in the NFL and CFL as a safety slash linebacker with the heart of his career being played with the Montreal Alouettes. Uh, he was a CFL All-Star in 2012, a CFL Eastern All-Star in 2012 and 2017. Uh, was known for his massive hits in the CFL as well as his classic Angry Birds celebration. We got Mr. Kyrie's Hey Bear. What's up, man? Us today. Let's on, go. Also, there's a couple of cute dogs. Like, come on. Yeah, I was going like, to say, I'm introducing we these dogs we started, jumping all over. No, no dogs, and they're just here to try to show my soft side, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. But thanks again for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We're happy to have you here. Glad to be here, man. Glad to be here. Right, you know, I had three podcasts booked um, like a week and a half ago, and my three-year-old got COVID, so I had to postpone all of them. So you guys like, like my first time, like right back into it. Like I've taken a, a hiatus from doing interviews and uh, podcasts and whatnot. So you guys are like my um, my step back into it. I, I, we appreciate it. You yeah, are. we're honored yeah. to have you. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Um, so with every, like, guest that we have, we usually just, like, the first question to start everything going, uh, we say, like, can you tell us your side of the story when it comes to your career? So after, like, starting with college, I guess, and then going through your career, uh, just tell us about yourself a bit. Well, um, man, I, I was blessed to play pro football until 38, you know, from 21 years old to 38 years old. And it started off a rookie in Minnesota, went into training camp, went into mini camp where they had drafted a safety and they had a veteran safety and uh, they actually drafted two safeties. And I went in as an undrafted free, free agent. And uh, man, within two days, two two day practices, I beat everyone out and was number one on the depth chart. Got a starting job, man. The day after I got that starting job, I called my agent like, look, man, I need an Escalade. I need this thing on clothes. <laughs> and, uh, man, I was just a, just a young kid. Hadn't had money like that before. It was just on the scene. And, uh, man, as fast as it came, it was gone. I got cut, <laughs> like, three weeks later. Just out with Randy, uh, Randy and Dante and all those bigger-name guys hanging out at training camp after hours just stuff that you're not supposed to do. So that came to a quick ending. Then I signed with the Houston Texans later on my rookie year and uh, did pretty good. And going into that next year training camp, worked really hard, ended up tearing my hamstring from my glute to my knee. Like the whole deal was just, yeah, it was just all bad. And that's how I got introduced to Canada. And, um, and I came up to Ottawa with the Renegades and uh, set a couple franchise records, signed a massive controversial contract. Like it was the first guarantee in franchise history. It was like a, a four-year million-dollar contract as a safety, American safety. Like that was unheard of. Right. And people thought that the Gliebermans were outside of their minds for signing me to that. But, you know, 18 years later or 17 years later, they were like, you, like they saw something that people didn't really understand at the beginning. Like I, uh, I was very fortunate to throughout my pro football career, especially in Canada, I started games at free safety, middle linebacker, Sam linebacker, will linebacker, deep and defensive end. So I started at every level, which you know just not something that you see often uh, out of a guy that can actually be a starter on in professional football at five different positions, three linebackers, one D-line, and one DB defensive back position. So um, that was cool. And uh, after I made a name for myself in Canada, uh, NFL came knocking again. I went to Cincinnati, became a captain on that team, uh, set the franchise record for most special team tackles in a season. Um, I got snubbed on a Pro Bowl, 
just for a guy I had a bigger name. I had way better numbers. I had like the best special team stats in the AFC. But just to just to be mentioned and have Pro Bowl be a part of the conversation, that was exciting. And um, after things work was done with uh, the NFL that time around, I bought a gym in New Orleans and I was content. Like, hey man, I had a ten year football career. Like, what more could I ask for? I had a street named after me in my hometown. Had a little holiday. Uh, I'd done a lot for my community. I founded a nonprofit and gave a lot of time and energy, coordinated 40 events. So I, I had done everything that I could possibly want to do with pro football. And one day I just had an itch and I called Jim Pop. And I was like, hey, man, I, uh, I want to come up there. He's like, man, I didn't know you were still interested in football. I was like, yeah. So I come up in 2012. And uh, this is at, I was 31 at the time. And uh, I still had it. I still had it. Like you said, I was an all-star. I was named hardest hitting player in the league. And uh, what I thought was going to be, okay, I'll go back and play one year, end up being seven years. And it was, and it was an amazing run because Montreal became home. Like, I love Montreal. Like, I love the place I was born in. Like, I met my wife there. My first, our daughter was born in Montreal. And, um, and it all went full circle because I ended up spending my last year of my career back in Ottawa where it all began, where I was able to be a part of a team that played in the Great Cup. I had a solid game in the Great Cup. Like the last game of my career, I started, I led my team in tackles and had a pretty solid game. So I, I was proud of that. And I got to say it was done whenever I wanted to say it was done. Like I, I could have sat around and kind of fought for another contract, but I had an opportunity to work for these guys, champion home builders is where I'm at now. And um, I mean, life is good. I think that's the, the fastest I can do the whole, the whole <laughs> career. There you go. In a nutshell. I love it. I love it. But uh, yeah. So before we go on, I should, uh, you know, you were touring around, uh, I got to let people know, but you were touring around Montreal, like Montreal high schools, uh, going around and like going, like giving speeches and stuff. And uh, for those who don't know, me, me, and, me and Kyrie, we go way back. <laughs> way back. <laughs> way back. We got that photo right there. That's in uh, 2016 or 2017, like, like late 2016, early 2017. I don't know. But uh, my favorite moment about that was uh, like, I was super nervous to meet you. You were super chill about it. But my favorite part about it is when, you showed me a text. I think it was from your agent. You said, no one knows that I re-signed with Montreal yet. Yeah. But, like, they're announcing it at, like, 7 p.m. So, you're the first person to know that I'm staying in Montreal. And I was like, okay. Yeah, like, I felt so honored when you told me that story. Like, that was amazing. Like, yeah, that was, that was that awesome, was... man. Because yeah. I bought – I had just had, like, a career year at 36, you know. And, and I was up for a new deal. And I didn't want to go anywhere. And – um I didn't. I didn't go anywhere until pretty much my hand was kind of forced um, with with the whole Cavis Reed um, regime, which was <laughs> that was short lived. But he, man, yeah. So I had to get up out of there. Uh, that, yeah, I was just gonna say. I think that left a lot of um, sour taste in, in players' mouths. Yeah, man. I didn't. I like. I love the city so much. And I was so embedded and so invested in the city and the team and organization. You know, I was a captain there. I just led the league in tackles. I was just done some record-breaking year things the year before. And going into the fall, the next year, he takes over and he's like, yeah, we don't know if you're going to be a starter yet. You know, we haven't named our starters. Like, dude, what special crack are you smoking? <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm like deep as I'm up for deep as a player of the year. And you're telling me you're not sure if I'm going to start. And I'm like, and that's fine. You know, clearly you want to start over and you want to do something different than that. Do that. But don't ask me to uh, take less money or cut a deal where I'm going to come and maybe be a backup when I'm playing some of the best football of my life. And clearly, like, not a, you couldn't find two linebackers in the league that were better than me. But you can't tell me that you have you have three on one team that's better than me? No. Nah, all right. It's cool. I'll go back to Ottawa. And that was weird because I had such a great relationship of, uh, with Mr. Wittenhall. Um, and he, he wasn't really aware. He was sick. He was a little sick at the time. And he didn't know how it was going down. And I didn't want to stress him with it. And it's like a relationship with a girl. Like, you can love her all you want. If she don't love you back, it ain't <laughs> – 
You know, even if she says, okay, I'll try it. Like, no, you can try it. If one of us is in love and one of us is thinking about it, yeah, it ain't going to work. Wise words. Yeah, yeah. talk about an analogy there. I haven't begged many pretty women, so I for sure wasn't going to beg that face of Cavis. Well, listen, I have a couple questions here. One of them would be, what was your favorite moment of your career? Like, straight up, if you have one. Man, so many. Oh, man. It was – you got to give me, like, a top five. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's one of our segments. So, uh, top five. (laughs) One of them – yeah, one of them was, like, having the street named after me was crazy. Like, I would have never dreamed. They took Theodore Roosevelt's name down and put my name up at the corner of Martin Luther King. And it's a place where I grew up where – Grew up kind of in a in a improv area, area. and um, to go from a kid that was walking barefoot on that street to having the street actually named after him, that's that's up there. Um, being in Montreal, and um, they like being on tickets and making plays, and they used to play an a bird squeal whenever I would make a big play in uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. at the stadium, right? Yeah. So like I would make a play and they would play the big um Skylark sound. Like that was so cool. Then I got married on the field at Percival Molson Stadium. Wow. So I made so many plays there. I knocked people out and been fined and all that and just to be able to come back and because my wife played at McGill. So it was her alma mater and the place where I kicked ass and take names and the place that we met. And so she came into the field in a Porsche 911 onto the field. And I thought that was like the coolest thing. And the, the speakers were playing the same, you know, the sound from the game. So that was pretty cool. And so like right now, two out of three is our football things, but they're very sentimental and off the field type things. And um, going back to Ottawa, returning where it started and um, being able to be on the, a leader on the team that led us to the Grey Cup. And uh, being named captain for the Bengals, because, like, it's a team vote, you know. So for your peers to believe in you that much, to say that, okay, you're the guy that we trust to lead us uh, for the season, like, not for a game, like, for the year, like, you're the guy. I, I think that's – is that five? I think that's the five. Street? You're close yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, close enough, man. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're the first person I've ever seen catch an onside field goal. I think it was you, right? That, that caught that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that happened too, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just have that a vivid memory of you catching the field goal. No one knows what's really going on. You're just doing your angry bird stuff. Yeah, they didn't know what the hell was going on. I'm <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> My own team wasn't even celebrating as much. <laughs> because when that happens, they automatically throw the flag, and then it has right. to be reviewed. Yeah. So they saw all the flags. Like, when I caught the ball, the ball actually slipped towards the, to the ground, and I, when I grabbed it back again, I grabbed the flags too. I had the flag, the ball, and that's kind of just my way of playing. Like whatever's around is getting hit or grabbed, whatever. So yeah, man, that was that was pretty cool. That was in um, Vancouver versus right. the Lions, BC. Mm-hmm. Hey, good memory, man. Good job. <laughs> yeah. no, I do my homework. I do my homework. There you go. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Um, other people we've had on. So we've had now we've had Davis Sanchez. We've had Tanner Marsh. Uh, we've had, well, I mean, we just filmed with Milt Stiegel this morning. Uh, okay. So all those guys I've played with so far. Yeah. Yeah. Or so again. Yeah. That's I what, played against Davis. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's, that leads me to my next question, which would be who, who, who would you say was like your favorite teammate? Doesn't have to be CFL. Could be like in the NFL, but like, I mean, you could name a couple, uh, obviously, if you don't have one, but yeah. Uh, so, um Terrell was a good teammate T.O. I mean he he was there when the Porsche 911 drove onto the field at Molson he was standing by my side as one of my groomsmen so T.O. was a really good teammate I enjoyed playing with him um Milt Stiegel chocolate milk as they call him. <laughs> he was man that guy was fun to play with I mean he worked so hard and I've been fortunate enough to play with um I played with Randy Moss Terrell Owens Ocho Cinco, Milt Stiegel, Nick Lewis. Like, these are all guys that are, like, 
top ten in which whatever league they played in. Character names top, too. Uh, top five, yeah. Household and, uh, That would be one a good panel for ESPN or TSN, whoever yeah. wants them. Seriously. Um, they all had the same thing in common. They they worked their asses off, except for Nick. Nick Nick did a, he just had it man he was <laughs> he was blessed with just an unbelievable talent he knew how to get open he was Nick was one of the smartest football players I've ever played with he didn't work the same way like Terrell Ocho Randy um, Milt guys that just killed it at practice like he he but he was a guy man. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Sorry, guys. My mom's trying to FaceTime me in the <laughs> middle of my <laughs> our important Zoom. <laughs> you're good. You're good. I don't know if you guys want to jump in here with any questions. Yeah, just, just to piggyback off that one, I mean, I guess Montreal was pretty important to you, but what was your favorite city to play in if it wasn't Montreal? Montreal. Yeah. And Houston. Houston and Montreal. But, I mean, Montreal was everything. So, it's number one. Yeah. Uh, Food, so, uh, culture, shopping, pretty girls. Um, pretty girls, hot women, um, food, <laughs> football. So, like, that's what go. I was going to say. Like, I'm going to piggyback off that one. My question was, like, it, it is Montreal. Montreal's known for a lot of things. One of those things is, is partying. Uh, but, like, if, yeah. if you could say, like, what, what was your favorite spot to go, let's say, after a win in Montreal? Like, what was your way, favorite way to celebrate, maybe? Oh, man. We – um. I didn't, I didn't party too hard. You know, I went out occasionally. Um, anything that's pretty much to do in Montreal, like, I, I, I've done it at least twice. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't spend a lot of time in the clubs. I used to go to this restaurant, man, on um, – wow. I'm really embarrassed that I can't remember. On Stanley. Okay. What's this restaurant called on Stanley? He had huge fishbowl drinks, great milkshakes. Um, really good, like Americanized food. Deville. I was gonna say yeah, that sounds yeah. like Deville, but I'm not sure. Yeah, man. Deville was, my spot. Deville was my spot. I, I've been to that restaurant more than any other restaurant in the city. That is a great spot. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this is a lot easier. I thought, I thought you guys were going to be hardcore, man. I thought we'd get some tough oh. questions here tonight. No, nah, man, we just shoot the shit. That's what we do on this That's podcast. That's what I'm talking about, man. I like that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, no, when we had Tanner Marsh on, he was, yeah, he was already pretty wasted. He was already he was just drinking beers. Just... I, so today's Friday, man. I've been waiting for you guys um, to do this so that I can uh, <laughs> go indulge. Yeah. The week is done. The week is done. I'm going to go watch Don't Breathe. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be on a different level than I am now. Yeah. For sure. You and me both. Yeah, and I learned that in Montreal, too. <laughs> how to elevate my, my senses a little bit more than So, obviously, your philanthropy is well-documented, and, like, it was very appreciated here in Montreal, at least speaking for us. Um, I Matt, you met Matt at his high school. That's pretty cool. But so now that your career is over, what, what does a week in Kyrie Zabera's life look like? Well, now I work for uh, Champion Home Builders, and I manage about 34 accounts. So I am constantly dealing with dealers and uh, clients on the phone, emails, and that pretty much takes up my day from pretty probably 9 to like 3. It keeps me pretty busy. And then I, I drive a couple hours a day, and I have a 1-year-old and a 3-year-old at home. So get home, try to spend as much time as I can with them. And my daughter is, um, I have an 18-year-old who just finished basic training with the Air Force. She wants to be a lawyer for the Air Force, the U.S. Air Force. And I have another daughter who is um, trying to get herself ready for med school. So she's, um, so she's there. So it's, she's going to be 21 in January. And then I have the 18-year-old. Then I have the 3-year-old and the 1-year-old. And then the two dogs you guys just saw. So, and the wife. So that's... Um, it's a lot. You got a full <laughs> we, were talk, we were talking about my memory. Is uh, I, I remember. I remember you showing me pictures of one of your daughters like doing track. I, I, I maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. But two, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two of them did. The two that we talked about, they were um, the doctor, the one who's aspiring to be a doctor, and the ones aspiring to be a lawyer. Were both really good track athletes. Right, right. No shortage of yeah. talent in your family, on or off the field. That is very clear. Yeah, man. And these 
So my my wife played professional basketball in Central America. So these next two, I have great expectation for. I think they're going to be super athletes. Like the three year old, she can already like do pull ups and she's jumping over shit, like <laughs> climbing walls. So she's going to be she's going to be a beast. They called her mom the beast at McGill. So yeah, she's going to be a beast too. That's dope, for that's sure, dope. I think she's gonna be like six feet tall. Like the sh- my wife's the shortest girl in her family, and she's five eleven. So I'm thinking this one she's gonna be one to watch for. Oh, mm-hmm. keep our eyes out. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you guys keep the radio, keep the show going, the podcast. It'll be down the road. You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we did the show with your dad before we had this really nice studio. And, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, speaking into existence. There yeah. you go. So, I mean, you're a CFL guy, so I got to say, I got to ask, like, have you kept in touch with, like, what's going on in the CFL? I mean, the, the Owls have their first game tomorrow, so we're fired up for that. So, I don't know if you're – Yeah, you know, I, I hadn't retired because I wanted to retire in Alouette. So, I'm going to be reaching back out to um, Hari and try to get that set up. Uh, we were in talks before all the COVID stuff that, you know, that was going to be a thing that, that happened. And I would fly up and retire in Alouette. But I really need to get this done because that's two years, man. I could be closer to getting some of my pension money. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we hope they do that a little ceremony pregame because uh, we'll, we'll definitely be there. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I would like. I would like to be there. So that's why I haven't really pushed it just to retire on paper and then, you know, get an Instagram post. And people be like, man, I thought that guy retired years ago. You know, like, mm-hmm. now I want to like officially do something nice in Montreal. Yeah, or maybe we could get another year out of you. Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, I'm, I'm making some pretty good money here in uh, standing one piece. And that's that's one thing, man. People ask me all the time, like, do you miss football? It's like, man, I got everything I can get, and I gave everything I can give to the game to where, like, I, I didn't feel like I ran out. It was just like, all right, like, yeah. I didn't expect to play football until I was 40. I was 38. You know, 36, I was like the oldest player over 30 to record the amount of tackles I did. So it was just a hell of a run. Like, I couldn't ask more from the game. Like, I'm so appreciative for all that football did for my life, my kids, my community. Never had one moment where I was like, oh, I got an itch to go play. Matter of fact, I went back into my, um, like, Facebook. I don't, I don't check Facebook messages often. And uh, I saw, I don't know if you guys have inst- have Messenger, but you have like your Messenger and then there's like people who are waiting, like a request to send you a message. Right, 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 right. And man, I had a, uh, a request from the Argos to go play in a playoff game, Argos versus Hamilton. Oh. And they had, they call, and I had no idea. I have no idea why they didn't reach out to my agent or call me, but they messaged me on Messenger and was like, hey, this is a number. Can you call us? We're interested in having you come and play and maybe even be a part of next year in whatever capacity, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And um, that was the one time I was like, damn, I missed a football opportunity. But outside of that, never looked back, never really didn't miss it. Just I just knew it was time for some new guys to have their turn. So coaching, management, any, nope, anything like that? Off the door? Coaching, yeah, coaching doesn't pay enough, and uh, especially not an entry-level coaching position. Like, uh, I'm not used to making that kind of money. and I'm used to making a little bit more. So um, I'm good where I am with these people. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, like, let me ask you another question. You're saying you're, you're going to get off this podcast. You're going uh, to go fix yourself a drink. Uh, you're going you're gonna to tell us uh, wh- what's your drink? Like, uh, like what do you think? I'm going to fix myself a bowl. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, there you there go. There you go. That works too. That works too. Yeah. Let's yeah. uh, 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 say it. Let's not even get. I don't want to really get into that part. But there you go. That's what I'm doing. Are you watching the CFL this year? NFL? You like um, it or not? I, so the thing that keeps me engaged with football because I've never been a fan of a team or a person. Just I, I like people, but never like a team. I've never been a guy like, oh, I'm gonna go buy a jersey, a Saint jersey, because I live in Louisiana. When I was a kid. I say I want to play pro football, so I'm not going to have any favorites. My favorite team is going to be the team that I, I played for. And I stuck to that the whole time. But the thing that drug me into loving and being passionate about football is fantasy football. Like, that's my shit. 
So I will be glued to my team, uh, my players. That's, that keeps me interested. And, uh, I mean, I love Coach Noel Thorpe. Um, I text him the other day. And, uh, you know, I have a couple friends like Kevin Brown and Jonathan Rose and Jonathan Mincy. So they're all in Edmonton. So some of the, uh, some of the people that I'm still cool with, Trevor Harris, like I'm always pulling for Trevor. Um, they're they're all in Edmonton, so I guess I'm kind of like an Edmonton fan right now. Hey, we're but, uh, we're getting enough of a controversy fantasy league going, so uh, you might you might have to join you might have to join up on that too. <laughs> yeah, man, hit me up, hit me up. But, um, and I mean, I I pull for Montreal also because of my ties to Montreal, and I played with Vern, and it's good to see him doing well, and I hope to see him dominate this year. So hopefully the Owls find their way, their way back to the top, be the powerhouse that they used to be. Like, so I take that back, man. I don't like saying I'm an Edmonton fan because I'm not. Like, I'm a fan <laughs> of those people. No yeah. Thorpe, Mincy, Rose, Kevin Brown, Trevor. Like, I'm fans for those guys. But if I had to say my team in the CFL, it would be the Alouettes. Yeah, which makes sense. That I pull for, it. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. That's for sure. But, hey, uh, as we end off this podcast, okay, so with every guest that we have, we always ask a, like an off, off sport question. Every, it's just like a random question. We call it the classic island question, okay? So you're in, a, you're in an airplane, it crashes, everyone dies except for you. What? But you get to bring three things to, the, to this des, like desert island, you know? What are you bringing? You're not allowed to bring family. You're allowed to bring pets, not family. That's the rule. Okay. Okay, so I got to be quick, but I need to have – I'm going to have the seed to a, whatever tree produces the most fruit. All right. So I'll have something to eat outside of fish. You are I have fruit. What's up? You're intuitive. Yeah. You, yeah you're so that, you're thinking about this right now. Absolutely, absolutely. And then I'm going to bring um, 23-year-old J-Lo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm going to bring a boat. Yeah. I'm going to have a boat. Yeah. <laughs> Plane crash, but guess what? I got a boat. That's it. That's I it. Got to, if I can have 23-year-old J-Lo, then I can have a boat. <laughs> <laughs> if I can pick anything I want, I can get J-Lo. I should be able to vote for a boat. <laughs> I got to say, I love those answers, man. <laughs> there Probably. you go. There you go. Probably the best so far, definitely, I think, for sure. Well, thanks, yeah. guys. Thanks. But, yeah, uh, listen. Yeah, but I am back in my playing weight, too, man. I know you guys said something about coming back. I am at my playing weight. He's going to say that. All right. <laughs> I, I played my last game at 238. I'm 237 today. So. Wow. Hey, yeah. wow. Congrats to you. That's amazing. Yeah. Thanks, guys. But, man, good to see you guys. Yes. Ever need me again? Hey, you know how to reach me. God bless, man. You guys do well. Kick ass, take names, be great. Don't ever settle. And one day you guys will take this podcast and you have be in some fancy studio somewhere I can see it for you guys. Only if you want it, though. Only if you want it. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. You're hey, the man, man. We appreciate it again. Thank you. No problem. God bless. Thank you so much for coming. Take care. Take care. No problem.